Morning First Love family, Devo's time, and here we are at the podcast studio at First Love Church. Matt, how are you doing today? Doing good, thank you. Nikki's downstairs putting up a Christmas tree for the kids' room, um, so we're just keeping busy doing the deal, but this morning we're going to be in Job chapter 8, verse 5, uh, and it goes through verse 7. So here we go. If you would earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty, if you were pure and upright, surely now he would awake for you and prosper, prosper your rightful dwelling place. Though your beginning was small, your latter end would increase abundantly. Let's go back and break this down. If you would earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty, What's that look like, uh, earnestly seeking God? Um, that means putting, putting the finding of God and his rulership over your day, your week, your month, your life. Earnestly seeking him means uh, he's number one on the list of things that I find as a priority as I'm planning my day, my week, my month, and my life. Make your supplication to the Almighty. We know that the word tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request be made known to God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus, Philippians chapter 4. If you were pure and upright, surely he would awake for you. You know, purity is a big thing to God. Uh, and, 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 you know, and, and that's the result of earnestly seeking God. And that's the result of making our supplication to the Almighty because we're putting him in the position of first in our lives. And when we're putting uh, him in the position of per first in our lives, then sin flees. The devil and the Lord cannot exist in the same place. So if you're earnestly seeking God and making your supplication to the Almighty, there's no room for the devil. I had a kid come to me. He used to be in my uh, high school ministry when I was at Calvary Laguna and uh, uh, and he was my like right hand man. He was like a little uh, uh, young leader, but he fell into drugs. And so he came to meet with me, and he goes, Pastor Pete, do you think that I should quit taking Zanny bars and smoking pot? And I'm like, No, I don't think so. No. He's like, What? That's the last thing I would expect you to say. And I said, No, I don't think that you should quit anything. What I think that you should do is earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty that there might be no room for those things in your life anymore because God would be taking up all the space where you're putting those idolatrous endeavors. If you were pure and upright, it says, purity comes out of this supplication. Pur purity comes out of this earnest seeking. But it says, surely now he would awake for you. Not that he's sleeping, but it's a way of saying that he would become more attentive to you. And what does that mean? That means he has preferences, one person over another person. It tells us in the word that God has no respecter of persons. But what it does say in Proverbs 15, 8, is that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Well, you might say, well, I'm not wicked. Well, let me, let me define the biblical definition of wicked. The biblical definition of wicked is anybody who is not serving God, who is putting the, uh, the desires and the precepts of God in the first place in his life. He's practicing wickedness. He's practicing idolatry. Because if you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping something. It's like my wife always says on Sunday morning, she says, we're going to bow our knees to someone. And if we're not bowing our knees to Jesus, then who are we bowing our knee to? Certainly someone, because we have a, a, a desperate need to worship. And we might not even be acutely aware of the fact that we're worshiping something, but if we're not worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, if we're not earnestly seeking Him, if we're not making our supplication to the Almighty, we are worshiping something. So, so uh, surely now He would awake for you. And then and an unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, and he was upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. There's an there's a animosity that goes on between the unsaved and the saved. 
not the saved towards the unsaved so much because we're praying for them because we know that God is not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance. But unbelievers have a natural aversion to believers. And why is that? Because when an unbeliever is confronted with a believer, they're forced to look at themselves. And when I'm forced to look at myself and you're looking better than me, I don't like you very much. Well, not so much today, but it was always like that before. And I remember being relapsed and like uh, seeing somebody from the program in the store and ditching them, like going to another aisle, you know. There was this uh, sense of uncomfortability. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. So understand the definition of wickedness from a biblical perspective, particularly from an Old Testament perspective, which we are in Proverbs here. Um, it's anybody who's not on the side of the Lord. Because Jesus said it, if you're not for me, you're against me. So if you're against me, then you're wicked. That's just all there is to that. And there's all these wonderful people running around doing, doing hu humanitarian works. And, but if they don't have the Lord, it's still... If you're not for me, you're against me. So it, if you would earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty, if you were pure and upright, surely he would awake for you. As I said, that doesn't mean he's asleep. It just means that suddenly his attention would be towards you and for you. And he would prosper your rightful dwelling place. And where's that? That's in the center of the seven candlesticks of Revelation chapter 2. That's where he is. Our dwelling place is where he is. And it goes on, it says, Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. We are so small before we come to Christ. I don't care if you're the head of a corporation, the, the head of a motorcycle club, the head of your uh, uh, your knitting uh, circle, the head of your book club. I don't care what you're the head of. I don't care if you're the CEO for a multinational corporation. Before you come to God, your beginning is small. Small compared to the huge, all-encompassing sense of victory that you have upon becoming saved. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, all things become new. And it could also say, all things become huge. You get swole, man, when you accept the Lord. Power comes in. You got power now. Not power to get what you want to do what you want, or power to intimidate people, or power to uh, you know, have your way in things. No, you get power of purity power of belonging you got that power that says come before my throne of grace that you might find help in time of need you get power to call on the lord and, and and affect people's lives through prayer though your beginning was small and i must insist that before christ our beginnings are minuscule and yet your latter end would increase abundantly and guess what? That's not just a one-time increase. No, it says your latter end would increase abundantly. And it could say, and I interpret it this way, that your latter end will continue to increase abundantly. I don't think that's a... a an unfair interpretation of the scripture. Because that's been my experience, that, that the, the latter end, that as, I, as I approach uh, the golden years, um, I, I, that, that it continues to increase abundantly. I mean, look at First Love Church. We're continuing to increase abundantly. And guess what? Good for me, as we continue to increase abundantly, I continue to increase abundantly because my ability to love people gets added on to. And I got to say, it's important. 
my ability to receive more love is more abundant. I love that you guys love me. I, 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 you know, that's not an ego thing or anything. It's like I'm, I'm so happy when I look out on a Sunday morning and I can feel the love of the congregation. It's pretty groovy. It really is. That's going to be it for today. I hope, I hope that serves you well. Think about it during the day today. I love your guts. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Lord, you are so good. And I really don't know how we made it before you, except that you sustained us because you had called us before we were in our mother's womb. So you saved us from wreckage. You saved us from death. You healed us from afflictions. And you brought us into the counsel of your Godhead. And what a marvelous thing that is. Thank you. And I pray for every single person that's watching here this morning that you would give their day a freshness and a fragrance that can be felt not only by them, but by everyone they encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys mucho. See you tomorrow. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.